This John Schneider, of course, manages the Blue Jays. You see him there at Tropicana. The second game of that four-game series is tonight. John, really appreciate it. I know you got a big series here. It's nice of you to give us a few minutes. I'll ask you something right off the bat. I know you're going to tell me you haven't made a playoff spot yet because the Orioles are five out. I understand that. But is it harder with a manager to get his team focused? Okay, we're in the playoffs. That was our main goal. Now we got to focus in on home field. How tricky is that for you to get your team focused? Hey, we got a chance to get three games at home in a couple weekends. Let's talk about that first. Go ahead. Yeah, for sure. Uh, thanks for having me on, uh, first of all, Chris. But I think it's, um, you know, this group is motivated. And, you know, obviously we want to be uh, in and playing in front of our home fans. Uh, everything the last couple of years not being in Canada, you know, that'd be, uh, that'd be a nice thing to do. But you got to get in first. So it's, uh, it's literally one game at a time. I know that sounds very cliche. But the group we have, I think, is focused on, on winning every series we can and uh, moving forward. Uh, when they change managers and you were named the skipper, uh, John, were you shocked like everybody else? Yeah, it was a <clears throat> it was a little bit surprising that day for sure, and uh, you know a lot going on in that 24, 48 hour period. So uh, I was fortunate to uh, you know know these players in the minor leagues in the last few years uh, in the big leagues here, and be very familiar with the staff as well the last four years. So uh, it took a little bit of time to transition, I think. Um, but something that I've always wanted to do, something I feel comfortable doing. And, uh, you know, just very thankful that I get to do it with this group. Is it, is it fair for me to say, John, that as a coach, you're sort of their big brother and a friend, players, and when you're a manager, you got to change the relationship? Is that a difficult scenario to go with? And is that accurate? Let me hear. Yeah, it's a little bit accurate. You try not to. You try to communicate the same. You try to, you know, have those same relationships. Um, and it's just it is always a little bit different when you're when you're the manager, not the bench coach or the coach. Um, I think the players respect that. I respect that. I've gone through it. I've learned from it. And, um, you know, again, it's nice that you're familiar with a lot of these guys. And I think it just makes that transition a lot easier. A lot of no, I don't follow it on a day. I mean, I follow your team, but I'm not sitting there watching every pitch. It seems like from people that we've talked to on this show that you've done a tremendous job of getting this bullpen and the roles Organized Was that accurate? And was that your first decision you had to make there when you took the job? Let me hear your thoughts on that. Go ahead. I'd like to, I'd like to think that's accurate, and thank you to the people that are saying that. Um, you know, I think bullpen is such a big part of every team, and you're obviously going to count on them um, a lot down the stretch and in the postseason. So uh, the acquisitions we've made uh, at the deadline with Zach Pop, Anthony Bass, uh, Mitch White coming over from the Dodgers in a variety of roles. So... It's definitely been a little bit easier to maneuver. Um, guys are stepping up and they're being open to being put in new roles, whether it's Timmy Mazur or Jimmy Garcia or Jordan Romano for more than uh, three outs. So it's a combination of trying to put them in the right spots and, uh, you know, guys really stepping up and, and executing when called upon. I like the personality. Now, I, this is the show that I do watch the ball games. I saw you last week against the Jays have a little dispute there with the Jays pitching coach and cash. That was an interesting little, uh, that was fun. You know, that's what a guy like me likes because it gives me something to talk about. That was fun. Like the little juice there out of the both dugouts in the last time these two teams got together, John. How about that for a sec? Let me hear. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's high, you know, it's highly competitive teams in the same division who are familiar with one another. Um, and you're always going to have the side of your players. And, you know, I think competitive people sometimes do things um, they may want to take back. And, uh, you know, at that moment, we're trying to protect Bo and, and uh, they're trying to protect their guys. So uh, heat of the moment and uh, have nothing but respect for, for Kevin and, uh, and his entire staff over there. That's when Bichette got hit in the face, basically, and then hit the two-run homer in the eighth inning to win the game. Uh, that was that game, first game of that series last week. God, I saw that you put Manoa there, make him pitch that last game of the season. Let me hear how you've handled the rotation here in these next 12 or 13. Sounds like that you will play hard here to get that home field, as you should, that last weekend. And it sounds like he's going to go Sunday or Wednesday of the last game. Is that accurate, John? Help me there for a second. Yeah, he's Let me hear. Yeah, he's going to go tomorrow, and I think it's a combination of uh, giving him an extra day with the workload he's taken on this year in his first full season. Um, so if it gets him a couple extra days, that's great. If we need him on the last day of the season, that's great too, or the first game in the postseason, uh, hoping that we get there. So 
the job that he's done has been uh, phenomenal this year uh, and uh, setting kind of a new, you know, a lot of new career highs as he goes in terms of workload. So trying to be mindful of him first and foremost, what's best for him, and trying to put ourselves also in a good spot um, if we can also do that as well. Did you think about holding Galsman back to have him pitch twice against Tampa? I know he pitched the last game against the Phillies, uh, I think, and he didn't pitch in this series, and he pitched last Thursday against uh, Tampa, a game that you guys lost. Did you think about making sure he pitched twice against his team in your division, John? Did you think about doing that last week? Yeah, there was a lot of different options on the table, and I think that, you know, kind of the decision we came to collectively was what's best for each guy. Um, not trying to line up in a, a certain opponent, that's obviously part of the decision too, but trying to just get them um, on turn at the right time for their remaining starts in the regular season. So whether it was here, uh, whether it was New York or Boston, we were comfortable with that with Gauze. He's been phenomenal the entire year, both on the field and in the clubhouse. Um, so yeah, it kind of worked out to where we just liked the, uh, the rest factor um, as well as the opponent. Always a pleasure, John. We'll get you again. Good luck. Have a good weekend. Appreciate a few minutes here. Nice of you to do it.